Welcome back. As you know, we're creating this idea journal. The concept is a place to store the bits and pieces and ideas and thoughts that you have throughout the year geared towards your creativity or the projects that you want to complete. In this particular video, we're going to be working on the encaustic wax tab or a place to store the ideas that come into my head for the encaustic wax medium. My name is Peggy and I call my channel Two O Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment to knock around my channel. I like to be very experimental. You're going to see a lot of different things. I'm not really disciplined into one medium. So if you like that, please hit the subscribe button and of course your likes and comments do help me. Here are some places that you can find me on the web. So to get started, let's just kind of take a look at where we've been. This is our front cover. The inside and back cover have these pockets. We created those in previous videos. These are the dividers that, or the tabs that we're going to be decorating in the next six videos. So I'm doing one per video just to be able to slow them down a little bit and give you a little more information rather than speeding through them. So we started by covering them in book pages and adding a little texture paste. So off to the encaustic wax portion of my studio. And we're going to use this sunflower as the basis for the decoration on this. I printed this on my inkjet printer. And I'm going to just rip it in half and do a very, not fussy, but, uh, <laughs> you know, just a, a quick cut outside the outer rim of these petals to get this sunflower kind of cut out and ready to paste down or glue down on that tab. If you've been watching the series, you'll know that these tabs have been painted with raw umber and yellow ochre. And I just draw that paint over the top of them with a credit card or hotel key card. So you can see, if you look there in the right side of the screen, that tab laying there, it already has that base coat on it. So you can refer back to a previous video, if this is the first one you're watching, on how I received that effect. So the sunflower is now cut out, and I'm pulling in some yes paste just to glue this down or paste this down on top of the tab. So we'll get that smeared on the back of that piece of paper and just adhere it. I'm going to give it a minute and let that kind of set up and dry. Just making sure that everything is stuck down or is sticking. Trim off any little excess that we have. Now, if you look up above, you can see the electric griddle that I have running at 200 degrees. And in those tins, the one I just dipped into, is a combination of beeswax and Damar resin. So it is the encaustic medium. The beeswax is the primary component of that, and the Damar resin is what is put in there to allow it to harden. Now, normally, I am using a wood substrate or something very rigid. This is going on a divider tab. It's you know, a manila or a file folder. So I'm going to just go very light with the wax because I, it's going to have some give to it, and I'm afraid that will crack if you get too much wax on here. So this is just for purposes of kind of demonstrating or illustrating the encaustic wax for the encaustic wa wax portion of this journal but I want it to be a pretty light coat of the beeswax. So I took 
just, uh, you know, a little bit and went over the top. And now I'm dribbling just some wax in places to create some texture. I'm letting that cool slightly, um, probably not long enough. But I'm using the piece of um, burlap ribbon to lay over the top of it and create kind of that hatched texture. And that will pick up the color when I go to add color to this divider tab. So there you go. That's how that texture is coming out. The heat gun I'm utilizing to fuse the wax to the substrate and to fuse the layers of wax together. So I'm just heating that wax to a point where it is clear and glossy and not to the point where it starts to flow. So just a light heat over the top of it. And when I'm trying to preserve that texture, I'm going in and out with that heat. So a little closer backing off, a little closer backing off, if you will. So I'm letting that cool just a bit. And there is that wax kind of laid down. We'll give it just a little bit more texture with that burlap. And I pulled out a piece of ball chain and I'm taking my brayer and while that wax is, is kind of set, cool, I'm putting that ball chain down, taking my brayer, rubbing over the top of it and just creating those marks in the wax. And that's just a piece of beaded, beaded copper chain. So now let's add some color to this. And I'm pulling in the pan pastels and just utilizing my finger as my paintbrush. And I want to kind of stick with these sunflowery colors here. So I'm using some different shades of the yellow. Hitting those petals with the lighter yellow and the further ones away or the back ones with a little bit darker. And around the outside edge, I want to stick with the darker colors. So I, I did a, a dark brown. Now we'll just fuse those colors into the wax with a little bit of heat from the heat gun. And there we go. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So on the back side, I just flipped that over and gave the back side a coat of wax as well. I'm back to my other work spot and have the gilding wax pulled out. And I'm hitting the outside edges with that gilding wax, kind of checking it to see how it's going to look in our little divider tab. And I think it's going fit to in, fit in quite nice. So I want to add just a, a way for it to kind of stick out. So I've pulled this fabric out. It is a canvas fabric that I have coffee stained. I'm just going to pull out a little rectangular piece and fold it over the edge of this particular divider tab and create another little tab. This one, this tab didn't have a defined tabature. So we're going to create one with that canvas. And it's, you know, the wax is still slightly pliable or, you know, it hasn't cooled completely and set up. So it is staying on just by me, me putting it there and pressing, but we're going to hit that with a grommet to hold that into place. So I'm pulling out the crocodile and just punching a hole through that fabric. We'll insert that grommet and then go back to the crocodile to set that grommet. I'm 
here's the grommet I'm sticking in. And then just move it to the grommet setting position on the crocodile. Get that in place, a little bit of pressure, and we are good to go. There, now we, we have it in place. And that's going to look good with the little canvas tab up there. This give us, gives us a little additional texture and some interest. I'm just checking it to make sure everything is down and trying to decide what else I can put on here. And I am thinking a piece of cheesecloth along the bottom. It's where I rest with this, I'm trying it out in different places, but I decide on going across the bottom right here. So we'll get that glued into place. I'm just using some glitter glue to hold it down. And there. And on the back is where I am going to put our artist quote. So let's decide which one we're going to use here. I think I'm also going to pull in some of this gold fabric to add to, to this. And I'm going to tie that through that hole or the grommet. And just take it off to the side. There. So that gives us quite a bit of interest up there at the corner. And I kind of like how that pulled that gold in. Kind of coordinates with the gilding around the outside edge. And now for our quote, I have a piece of coffee stained paper. And I think I'm going to put that right there. So I'm just pulling up my phone to research a few artist quotes. And I think I wind up using the Matisse quote here. Creativity takes courage. And I think that that rings true, you know, kind of sticking yourself out here on YouTube and allowing people to scrutinize your work and be kind of uncomfortable at times. You know, we're all learning, we're all trying, we're all unsure of our pieces and, and what we do, but Here we are. Right there, we'll stick that there to remind ourselves. And I think we're getting we're getting close to a finish point on this one. I am just <coughs> labeling it encaustic wax. And now to decide where to stick this label. 
And of course, I'm going around the outside edges of everything with that vintage photo to distress it up a bit. And I think we'll lay this atop the cheesecloth here at the bottom. That cheesecloth was also coffee stained. And I think we have a finished piece. We'll bring back in some liquid pearls. Well, I decided to hit go around the outside edge of this with the stabilo. I'm just kind of shadowing, giving it some definition. And I will come back in with some liquid pearls and hit some liquid pearls on this. There we go. I knew I did that at some point here. So we're just keeping that consistent. We'll do that on each and every one. So that completes the encaustic wax. Right here is what you have completed. We finished the clay in the first video. That was the first divider we did. This was the second, the gel press divider. If you haven't seen those, hit the playlist here in the end screen. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I am very grateful for all of the likes and comments. I look through them all and try to respond to everyone. And I'll just say bye for now and see you in the fourth divider.